Hi, welcome back to the channel and video number 110. This one's going to look at 12 different four-place airplanes, uh, home-built and certified, and just look at the uh, differences in performance and design and uh, resultant trade-offs. So hopefully you'll find this one interesting. Okay, what follows will be the 12 airplanes I'm looking at in today's video. And of course, there's no one airplane design which suits everybody's mission and tastes. That's why we have choices and uh, we're just exploring those choices here and uh, it's just different flavors if you will. People have different criteria and what's important to them and this is a wide range of aircraft that uh, you could choose from. We'll be looking at some very lightweight airplanes like the Sling TSI, uh, some very heavy airplanes like the Diamond DA-50RG, some uh, classically fast airplanes like the Lancer 4, the current best-selling GA aircraft, the Cirrus SR-22, and the most popular four-place kit-built airplane, the Vans RV-10. Okay, we're at one of my famous charts here. We've got the airplane type up on the top parameters we're going to compare on the side here. And I've tried to uh, keep this as realistic as possible. Data was drawn from manufacturers' websites, pilot reports, uh, videos. So uh, don't crucify me in the comments. As far as weights go, airplane equipment varies quite a bit, so therefore weights may vary quite a bit as well. I tried to choose uh, realistic empty weights here. Most of the performance is at uh, 12,000 feet. That's about as high as you'd want to fly without oxygen and uh, it gives a slight advantage to the turbocharged aircraft but uh, we had to uh, compare things as closely as possible at the same altitude. So I've had to extrapolate and interpolate to some degree to bring these uh, as close as possible together at 12,000 feet for an equal comparison. So I'm not going to go over every single aircraft comparing it to each other here. You can uh, look at the chart yourself for that. What I'm interested in doing here is uh, pointing out a lot of uh, differences in the design. These are all four-place airplanes, but they were all uh, designed in a very different way, different criteria, and I think it's interesting to point out those things, especially when it comes to horsepower, weight, wing area, and what the resultant performance was. So all these aircraft do carry four people. Some will carry a lot more fuel. Some will have to trade off fuel but uh, I think you'll find the comparisons interesting here. So in the first row, we've got horsepower, and uh, you might notice on the RV-10, normally they say 260 horsepower engine. However, we found most of the RV-10s, people are putting higher compression pistons in, maybe porting uh, different exhaust systems. So the average one's probably closer to 280 horsepower, so I've made that representative here. And any of the engines uh, here with a T behind them, these are turbocharged, so there's a few of those. And of course, the uh, Diamond uh, DA50RG has a 300 horsepower turbocharged diesel engine, which is the only one in this comparison. And the next parameter, uh, empty weight. Well, we can see here that varies quite a bit. The Sling is by far the lightest aircraft here, and the Diamond is by far the heaviest one here. So we'll come back to that later when we compare some other things. Um, you can see the metal airplanes like the RB-10, which is uh, probably the best-selling four-place home-built aircraft in the world. It's fairly light by comparison. Uh, some of the other aircraft here are retractable gear, of course, and uh, most of the other ones are composite. Uh, gross weight, well, gross weight varies a lot. Again, the uh, Diamond is the heaviest. Sling is uh, the lightest here. And... Uh, very interesting here, despite the differences in empty weight and uh, gross weight, useful load. Well, the sling uh, doesn't do too badly here. It has the smallest and uh, smallest engine and least horsepower, but it still carries a decent load. It's not the lowest for uh, useful load here. And uh, the winners here appear to be the uh, Lancer 4 
and the Mako, 1,350 pounds. Cirrus is close here. And here we've got the fuel capacity, standard and optional in some cases. Uh, the sling with the smallest engine has the smallest fuel capacity. And uh, we go right on up to uh, 110 gallons optionally in the Lancer 4. And uh, of course, a lot of these airplanes can't carry a uh, full load of passengers and full fuel. But when you've only got two people aboard and you don't want to make too many stops, having 110 or 109 gallons here can be pretty useful. And uh, stall speed here. Well, the sling being uh, the lightest airplane here and uh, got a fairly big wing and a uh, good flap arrangement, uh, lowest stall speed, 48 knots. Uh, what's most impressive is probably the Lancer 4 here, in my opinion. Uh, this has the smallest wing of the bunch here and is uh, quite heavy as far as gross weight goes. They managed to get the stall speed down to 62 knots. I think that's pretty impressive. The RV is also pretty impressive. Uh, it's got a fairly big wing, fairly lightweight, 53 knots. Takeoff distance. Um, the RV wins that one here. Pretty big wing, uh, good flap system and fairly powerful engine, so it's got a pretty good power to weight ratio. Uh, the canard designs don't do so well, and that's uh, kind of normal. It's hard to rotate these until they get up to uh, a certain speed. Uh, sling does very well here, considering the low horsepower. The lightweight, again, uh, gives it uh, pretty good performance. And we'll keep coming back to that. Uh, lightweight airplanes perform better than heavy ones. and. Uh, the guys at Sling have done a very good job designing this thing and making it perform on uh, the Rotax uh, 915 IS engine with only 141 horsepower. Most of the other aircraft in this uh, comparison are kind of in the, you know, uh, 1,200 to uh, 1,600 foot range. This is at gross weight, of course. Rate of climb, well, this is at gross weight. Uh, you see the Mako does uh, pretty good. And uh, the Mako, of course, has a retractable nose gear, but fixed main gear. So these are the best, the most accurate figures I can find. And uh, the sling does remarkably well again, considering it's uh, very low horsepower, still manages uh, 1,000 feet per minute. That is the lowest of all these airplanes, but you have to remember it's got less than half the horsepower of some of these other airplanes, so still uh, pretty decent. And the winner here uh, appears to be the Lancer 4. It's got a very small wing, but it does have 350 horsepower, and that definitely helps the rate of climb. And this is horsepower to weight ratio. And you'll see the velocity uh, XL wins here. It's uh, about nine pounds per horsepower. Most of the other aircraft are kind of around uh, 12 to 14. Uh, the RV being pretty light, fairly powerful, uh, not a lot different than the velocity. The sling has the uh, Worst power to weight ratio here, but as we saw, the performance uh, is pretty good considering that. They've done a good job. And we come down to the range next. Well, range is uh, highly impacted by the amount of fuel carried and the fuel burned, of course, and the speed. And uh, we see the sling has got the, uh, not the lowest range here, but it does pretty well. It only carries uh, 45 gallons. The uh, Diamond actually, despite the diesel engine, um, doesn't do that well. It doesn't uh, carry that much fuel, so that impacts the range considerably. It's actually at the lowest range of uh, any of the aircraft here. And uh, the Lancer 4 with the optional fuel, which uh, you couldn't carry with all four people aboard, of course, is uh, 1,650 uh, nautical miles. That's uh, pretty impressive. And these figures here at 55% uh, power, so quite a low power setting here. Um, in the case of the sling, it's probably a little bit higher uh, percentage power than that. This line showing nautical miles per pound of fuel burned. And the champion here is uh, the sling. But of course, the sling is going quite a bit slower than the other aircraft, so it's not a real apples to apples. There's nothing we can do about that. It's a fairly low-powered airplane. It just doesn't go as fast as the other ones. So uh, the airplanes that are uh, doing, you know, fairly decent speeds, 160 to 190 knots, the RV comes out looking pretty good here. And uh, I know a lot of people say, well, how can the RV do so well? It's hard to believe. Well, I will show you a slide later uh, proving this is all true. Again, it's important to point out that the RV is not going as fast as some of these other aircraft. 
So if it was corrected for the same speed here, uh, the RV would probably fall uh, pretty close to kind of the normal around 2.7, uh, 2.6 to 2.7 nautical miles per gallon. So still pretty good. Uh, if we look at the diamond with the diesel engine, it's uh, not that great. It's a heavy airplane, has uh, quite a bit of cooling drag. It's a big airplane and it really uh, doesn't do any better than the gasoline powered ones here. And I might add it's also going slower. So again, if this was corrected, the diamond might actually look a bit worse here. So if you look at the 55% cruise speeds at 12,000 feet here, um, this gives a fairly decent uh, comparison of uh, what the designers have accomplished here with how much power they have with different size wings and uh, different weight of airframes. So if we go back to the RV-10 here, for instance, uh, it's certainly not the best here. Um, the Mako, the velocities uh, are uh, about 13 knots faster. The Cessna TTX, uh, same as the RV with more horsepower, and that's interesting. They're both fixed gear aircraft. The Sling, this is at 77% power because it's you know very slow at 55% power, and it wouldn't even be a typical power setting for the Rotax 915. So uh, this isn't quite the same here, 152 knots, but of course, because it's a small engine, the fuel burns pretty low on it. So it's the most accurate comparison I could put in here with it trying to compete with these more powerful airplanes. And uh, the Mooney, everybody knows the Mooney. It's only uh, marginally faster than the RV-10. And that's interesting. The Mooney is supposed to be a very slick airplane. Uh, it has retractable gear. The RV-10 doesn't. We look at the Panthera, which has uh, a little bit less horsepower than the Mooney, but uh, a few knots faster. The Cirrus, uh, you know, very slick airplane. Most people think it's actually uh, slower than the RV-10. And the Diamond, uh, quite slow. Again, it's a big airplane, a lot of cooling drag. It's heavy, and that all impacts uh, cruise performance. And the Lancer 4 is clearly the winner here. It's got the most horsepower. So it's not really a fair comparison that way, but it's substantially faster than anything else here. It's 40 knots faster than the next fastest airplanes. I just threw in the max cruise numbers here for another uh, comparison. Uh, Mako uh, pretty fast for kind of a half fixed gear airplane, 200 knots. Uh, the RV-10 uh, somewhat slower here with the fixed gear. Velocities, uh, the turbo velocity pretty fast. Uh, here. It's fully retractable, of course. Uh, the sling does reasonably well, again, considering how little power it has, but it's uh, also the slowest airplane at even at this altitude being turbocharged. Mooney is uh, pretty fast, a metal airplane, retractable. Panthera is slightly faster on less horsepower. And Cirrus, uh, somewhere in the middle. The Diamond at 90% uh, power, which is maximum continuous actually had a flight test and uh, we could observe the real number here. So it's uh, running a little more power than the other airplanes and going uh, around the same speed. Of course at 90% power it burns quite a bit of fuel. And the Lancer obviously uh, with a small wing, uh, very slick shape. It's the fastest of the bunch by uh, quite a margin here, 20 knots faster than even the Velocity XLT. And here we've got the speed range and this is just uh, the difference between uh, maximum speed and minimum speed, so stall speed or minimum speed in the case of the velocities. And uh, the aircraft are all surprisingly close. They're all in the three point something range. Uh, Lancer wins this one, but it's got the most horsepower. Uh, but on the other hand, they've done a very good job of uh, getting the stall speed low with that small wing. The small wing helps uh, the high speed. And the sling does really well. Doesn't have high horsepower, the fact that it's got a very low stall speed because mostly of the very light weight, it really pays off here. So it's a very flexible design. And this one here is horsepower required for 180 knots, uh, true airspeed at uh, 12,000 feet. And uh, this is probably the most telling of uh, how well the designers did with their uh, compromises here. So if you only go for high speed, you might have a very high stall speed or you might have a poor rate of climb. So this is maybe one of the best comparisons here uh, of 
extrapolated the information for some of the aircraft like the sling which can't really do 180 knots and uh, obviously the engine uh, rated at 141 horsepower can't make this 179 but I've tried to correct everything for this 180 knots at 12,000 feet so you can see uh, the Mako here is uh, pretty impressive considering the main gear are uh, down and welded the RV takes uh, somewhat more horsepower to do that speed Velocities are both very efficient. The Cessna TTX, uh, I think the weight hurts it here somewhat, and uh, it uh, actually requires more horsepower than the RV, even though it looks a lot slicker. The induced drag from the higher weight up here is perhaps a uh, cause of that. The sling actually uh, would require less horsepower than the RV if it could make uh, this much horsepower to do that speed. So again, that points to pretty uh, amazing design compromises they've made with the sling. Of course the light weight uh, reduces the induced drag. The Mooney uh, somewhat slicker than we'll say the RV here. Of course retractable gear. Panthera is uh, the lowest of all the airplanes here. And the Panthera looks very slick. It's fairly light. It doesn't have high horsepower but uh, it goes. Cirrus despite uh, you know claims of being very slick actually requires uh, pretty high horsepower and the diamond being the heaviest and with the largest wing requires the most horsepower to do 180 knots and the uh, Lancer 4 is very close to the Panthera here uh, 180 knots isn't optimal for the Lancer small wing it probably has less drag than the Panthera at uh, above 200 knots and would require less horsepower but in this comparison the Panthera actually comes out on top this is a wing area comparison and uh, Diamond does not publish the wing area of the DA50RG. However, I've measured some drawings and come out uh, estimating it at around 185 square feet. So it has the largest wing of the group. Uh, Lance Air 4 is the smallest wing of the group, uh, not quite half the size of uh, the Diamond. Most of the other aircraft are kind of in the 140 to 150 range. The Mooney has quite a large wing and uh, given the speeds that it delivers it's obviously a very slick airframe it might not look as slick as uh, uh, the TTX or the uh, Cirrus but uh, it actually turns in uh, really good speeds and it's still a metal airplane the sling is 134 it doesn't need a big wing because it's very light and the Panthera has the next smallest wing compared to the uh, Lancer 4 120 and uh, they kept this airplane pretty light. They've got a good flap system on it, so it uh, does very well with 120 square feet of wing area. And finally, we get to the wing loading. Uh, this is uh, gross weight divided by wing area. And uh, RV, something familiar, is around 18. The velocity is somewhat similar. Most of the other uh, so-called slicker airplanes are closer to 25. You'll see that's pretty common here. Lancer 4 with a 3,500 pound gross and the smallest wing is by far the highest at 35. And uh, it's about uh, a little more than double the uh, sling's wing loading. Of course, the sling uh, is a very light airplane, uh, low horsepower. And uh, because it's light, they've got a very low wing loading, and that pays off getting uh, you know decent climb rates like this with only 141 horsepower. So we're just going to touch on one more topic here, and that's cooling drag. And just do a little bit of an analysis here on that. You know from some of my previous videos, that's one of my big interests. So uh, the Panthera's got 260 horsepower. We'll say the average RV-10 has about 280. And the DA-50RG has 300. Of course, it's a turbo diesel. And uh, certainly on the Panthera, they've shrunk the inlets down and they have kind of a unique uh, side outlet here. It does not have cowl flaps, uh, but they have reduced probably the amount of air going in here to cool. From some pilot reports, uh, you might not be able to climb at best rate of climb speed with the Panthera on a really hot day. They've optimized uh, these inlets and outlets more for lowest cruise drag. So again, that's another compromise. The RV-10... It's kind of average uh, reputation is it cools okay again on a really hot day you might be lowering the nose a bit to keep the CHTs in check and on the DA50RG of course uh, being a turbo diesel 
Uh, it is liquid cooled, um, but because of the high boost pressure the diesel has to run to make the horsepower, they've got uh, two fairly large intercoolers fed by these ducts here. And they're using these ducts here to cool the oil and the uh, coolant. And you can see the uh, much larger uh, inlet area used on the Diamond than on the Panthera here. Yes, the Diamond has uh, 40 more horsepower, but uh, it's probably got triple the amount of inlet area. So this uh, results in uh, obviously higher cooling drag. And uh, none of the airplanes here really take advantage of uh, maintaining uh, cooling air momentum for lowest drag. It's kind of hard on the air-cooled engines to do a good job. Diamond could have uh, probably done a lot better job here, but uh, when it comes down to packaging, it's a lot easier to put everything um, as a power egg, so everything attaches firewall forward. And there just isn't enough cowling space with all these coolers and the big engine in here to uh, do a nice job ducting anything. So again, it's a compromise. Panthera did uh, a good job here for cruise drag. Uh, at the expense of maybe some uh, cooling on a hot day in the climb. The RV is kind of okay, average. The Diamond probably doesn't have any uh, problem cooling, but it's paying the price with uh, higher cooling drag than the other aircraft. And just for interest's sake, uh, Diamond had this great picture of uh, the DA50RG uncowled, and you can see the twin intercoolers here. And these other ducts here are feeding air to the uh, coolant and uh, oil heat exchangers. So you can see, uh, yeah, not a lot of space to do anything else here. And uh, it makes it so the engine uh, bolts up everything in one package here. They could have gone to some sort of uh, wing or ventral radiators, then they would have had a pipe coolant somewhere else. And uh, like uh, everything else in aircraft design, everything's a compromise. Uh, you've got to make it kind of easy to work on. You don't want to add a whole bunch of extra weight. So uh, this is what uh, Diamond's uh, solution was. So it's just interesting to see it all here packed in. And I promised you some proof earlier on that RV-10 with the uh, pretty impressive nautical mile per pound figure. Here we've got uh, an RV-10 in cruise at 10,500 feet. Density altitude is 12,400. Power setting is 59%, so 21 inches and 2,300 RPM indicating 141 knots and truing 170 knots on 10 gallons per hour. So you can see uh, pretty efficient metal airplane, fixed gear and all. And one more thing I should mention here, uh, some of the manufacturers don't seem to approve of lean of peak operation. So the fuel flows listed in this comparison uh, tend to be a little bit higher than they would be if they allowed lean of peak operation. So uh, just keep that in mind. So to sum things up, we can see how lightweight pays off on the uh, sling design. It gives it a pretty good overall performance with low horsepower. The RV-10, good uh, load carrying capability, very good short field, and uh, it's advertised as kind of a good overall performer, and I think that's a, a fair assessment. And the relatively low empty weight of the RV-10 uh, gives it some advantages over its heavier competitors. Velocity is uh, low weight again, and uh, very good overall performers, and that's why they're a very popular four-place uh, canner type aircraft. Lancer 4, 4P, a revolutionary design that does incredible numbers. Uh, even after all these years, nothing really matches it. The Panthera, very slick European design. Uh, it's got the numbers to go with the looks, and a uh, very appealing airplane, I think. DA-50, a very rugged design, very spacious and luxurious. Really makes sense in uh, areas of the world where Avgas is super expensive as it runs on uh, Jet-A. And look at that interior, pretty nice. Actually all these aircraft have really nice interiors and I'd take any one of them. Thanks very much for watching, we'll see you next time.